Yeah, thanks. It's a, it's, it's a really good, it's a pertinent question. So, firstly, let's come back to, to some of the theory in terms of where we started with, with niche theory. And a lot of this field has grown up around this more Grinnellian or Hutchinsonian concept of the niche as a, 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 an abiotic construct rather than, than a biotic construct. So, the, there is a, a theoretical background to, to why most of the variables that we use were thinking large spatial scales and that many of these abiotic factors are driving distributions. It's a highly perfect way of looking at the world, but that is um, the background and, and, and why a lot of these models are predominantly run by abiotic variables. That doesn't answer your question, I'm just a precursor to, to, to try to answer your question. So that's the background to it. There have been some studies and um, some need work um, that, takes, that take really nice examples of interactions between species. So I've collaborated on some work, and I can refer you to the paper, which I'm making, and was, was the lead author, where we took a, a, a very known, well-known symbiotic relationship between two bird species, a woodpecker and, I'm blanking right now, I think it was an owl. Um, yeah, it, it was an owl, I should, I should know. Um, but a very nice symbiotic relationship because the woodpeckers excavate the cavities that the owls use the nest. So, the owls are only found where the woodpeckers are found. So what we did was feed in, as a, a, a rasterized layer, so not as a vector layer, as a rasterized um, layer, the distribution of the species. I say rasterized, we basically took all the occurrence points and we just said, here's a cell that's occupied, here's a cell that's not occupied. And you know, you, you actually, if you look at the data, you see there are nice patches of areas that are occupied versus not. And we fed that in alongside the usual kind of abiotic variables as a predictive variable. And sure enough, when you include that variable, you get a much, much better prediction of the owl distributions than when you exclude that variable. Because that distribution, you know, it's a, it's, an, it's, it's a biotic factor, it's a biotic element, but gave us much better prediction. So that was a, a neat kind of, you know the relationship, it's a very relatively simplified system. Um, uh, that, that could be used to simply feed in the distribution of one species to predict the other. So that's one way of doing it, and, and we, what we can do is, is point you towards uh, not many, but some other attempts to do similar things. And they, they really take these well-known, maybe a predator-prey type example, or, or this nice symbiotic example, well-known, relatively simplified systems. I think it's a real research frontier and a really big area of research here that I'm particularly interested in to try and do this across broader communities of species. So not just thinking about two or three species interactions, but start thinking about food webs and real ecological, you know, biotic communities. Um, so if you ask a further question, there's some work that's being done. I think there's an awful lot more work that needs to be done. And in fact, it's trying to link this these theoretical, you know, the theoretical construct, and I think we've made progress towards this in, in the book that we've, that we've collaborated on, you know, Karen Enrique and I and, and colleagues, theoretically between trying to link Hutchinsonian or Grinnellian concepts of niches with Eltonian concepts of niches, and we've framed it in, in, in the context of scale being important. So we've made some theoretical advances, but there is a lot more work to be done. And just a final point to make, we, in the example that I've just mentioned, um, just kind of, there, there are alternatives. You could just feed in the distribution of the species as a predictive variable, or you could model the distribution of the species and then feed in as a predictive variable for another species your model distribution of the species. So that's another thing that folks, that folks have done. There are different options there. There are a few examples that we can point you towards, but it's, there's an awful lot of work that should be done. Does that help?